Hello, Simba. This is how Simba sits on top of a cat tower. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It's 8.45 a.m. Hydrox just came out of the shelter. It looks like there's some leftover food from yesterday, which is now frozen. Hydrox is scratching on the doormat. And this is the shelter that I saw Ditto go into yesterday. Um, I don't know how long he stayed in there. I don't know if he stayed in there overnight. I'm assuming he already came out of the shelter this morning. I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe he's still in there. I have no idea. Today, uh, sometime today, I'm going to try to hook up a camera. So we can keep an eye on the shelter also. Um, yeah, we'll see. And there's the automatic feeder. I really can't wait for all this snow to melt. It's 9.30 a.m. and Stella is watching a duck video. So there's a new video for cats on YouTube and Boo has been sitting here watching it also. This is his TV watching chair now. Um, anyway, so it's a bunch of ducks and it's snow, it's like a winter duck scene. And Boo has been watching it for at least 45 minutes and Stella was sitting there absolutely thrilled by it. It's 10.05 a.m. and I was just gonna open the back door and put some food out for the cats, but I looked out the window first and I saw this, look! Can you see that? There's a paw sticking out of the shelter door. That has to be Ditto. I think Ditto has been in there all night. That's great. That's awesome. It's 10.10 10 a.m. I just came outside and there's Ditto. He looks so comfortable and happy. I propped the clear plastic door flap open yesterday because if a cat has never used a shelter before, they don't really understand the doors. So that's why I propped it open because I knew if it was propped open, chances are better that he would use the shelter, and he did. After I put catnip in, he went in the shelter. It looks like he does not even want to come out of the shelter. I would not want to come out of the shelter if I was him either. That might be the first time ever that he has had a warm bed, ever. So that's pretty amazing. He's very happy there. Here's Hijax. Hijax wants some food. So I'm going to go inside and put some food together and then I have to come out and clean up the mess from yesterday. This has to be cleaned up. This has to be cleaned up. All these plates have to be cleaned up. Look at what's going on here. I don't know if you could see this, but there's a trail. I don't know who's been in the snow, but it looks like somebody tried to uh, come under the fence or they came under the fence. And it looks like Looks like they walk this way, and yeah, looks like they made it over here. I don't know who it was, because this is really deep snow. But maybe if it was a cat, and the cat's like not very heavy, maybe they're not going to sink into the snow that much. And if we look at this uh, snowy path here on the side of the house, there's quite a few animal tracks in it. Actually, it looks like someone made a poop right on the trail. That's the shelter Ditto is in. I just put some food out for the cats. I make some warm chicken broth into the food for them. Here comes Ditto. Ditto's afraid of me today. Ditto, you have your own plate. Ditto, you could eat off your own plate. There you go. Let Hydrox eat on his plate. You eat on your plate. Eat your food, Hydrox. Eat it. It could have been a dominant show by Ditto. Eat your food, Hydrox.
All right, welcome back. We'll see what, what's going on here. It's 7.11 p.m. and Ditto and Hydrox are eating some food. I just put some food out for them. They're each having a scoop of homemade raw food with some warm water mixed in. And I gave them some herbs. And they're having a little bit of canned food also. And there is a raccoon that has been taking a bath in the water bowls. It might have eaten some food also. I don't know where it came from, but um, I need to go outside and take some garbage out. But I'm not going to go until the raccoon's gone. So tomorrow I have to go out. So that means I need to put some fresh water out also. It's 7.27 p.m. Ditto went back into his shelter and Hydrox is still eating. I just fed the inside cats. Hydrox needs to put his paw on the plate to keep the plate from moving around. That's what Simba does. I'm, I'm trying to teach Hydrox how to do that. Hydrox, put your paw on the plate. When you eat on a plate, put your paw on the plate. If you put your paw on the plate, the plate doesn't move, okay, Hydrox? You want some more food? Okay, I'll put some more out for you. It's about 8.45 a.m. right now. Boo is watching ducks. He's watching ducks walk on the snow and then swim in water. This is his new favorite video. <laughs> he loves watching ducks. Every morning I have to put nature videos on for the cats. The cats watch more TV than I do. And it seems that the only time this TV has been on lately is when it's on nature videos. And here's Simba. Good morning, Simba. And of course, Boo likes spending time with his arch. I moved it over here. Um, it was in his room before, but I moved it here because I thought he would like it and he uses it multiple times a day. He likes to sit with it when he watches TV. Right, Boo? Big stretch. Big stretch. Boo stretches when he's happy. Was he going to sit on the scratch and roll? Is he going to turn around and sit on it? Yeah. He likes to sit here, too. Mm -hmm. Hello, Simba. And here's Stella. Hey, Stella. Stella likes to help me get ready for my day. She likes to sit on the bed with my clothes. Right, Stella? Stella says she slept in the penthouse all night, and then she woke me up this morning because I was sleeping too late. She says, it's a weekday. I should be up by 8 o'clock. Okay, Stella. This is what Simba wanted. He wanted me to open the window so they could smell the air. It's 9.18 a.m. and here's Boo. And Ditto and Hydrox were just right there. They were just there before. I don't know where they went, are they? Oh, they're hanging out. They're sitting on the doormat by the back door. So Boo's been sitting here watching them. Hello, Simba. This is how Simba sits on top of a cat tower. How you doing, Simba? He's purring. Wow. 
What are you doing, Simba? I'm going to cover you with the blanket? Put the blanket on top of you? <laughs> no. It's midnight. I'm just about to go to bed. It here, Simba. He was playing with some pom-poms, but now he's just resting on the rug. Here's Splash. I don't know if you could see him, but he's hanging out under the dining room chairs. It's dark in this room, so you probably can't see much. Here's Stella. She's sleeping in a round cat bed by the window. She looks very comfortable. And here's Boo. He's wide awake, and he's still watching duck videos. It's about 12.30 p.m. right now, and this is the flower pot that Ditto knocked over yesterday, I believe. He was rubbing up against it, and I don't know how, but he managed to knock it off uh, where it is right here, and that's what all the dirt's from. It scared him, and he ran off, but then he came back. And here's Hydrox. He's sitting on this little cat path, but I need to walk, walk along it. Okay, he moved. And this is what's going on with Ditto's shelter. So yesterday, for the first time, I put the shelter flap down. It had been propped open for like a day. And Ditto had been going in and out of the shelter really good. So I said, let me put the flap down and, you know, it'll keep him warmer with the flap down. Unfortunately, he couldn't figure it out at first. And this is the wee wee pad that was in the shelter. Um, so as he was trying to open the flap, he ended up just uh, taking the wee-wee pad out. So I'm going to throw that out, and I'll put another one in there. And the reason why I put it in there is just to protect the heating pad. The heating pad has a like a plush cover on it, but, you know, to keep it from getting really dirty and soiled and everything, um, I think it's a good idea just to put a a wee wee pad on it and what I'll do today is I'll prop the door open again I think I think Ditto likes it better when it's propped open here's what it looks like with the door propped open so it's like half open and obviously with it propped open some cold air is gonna get in there but he seems to be happy that way so maybe once he gets used to it more the thing about these door flaps is the plastic on it is just like really firm plastic and the plastic i'm using on the door flaps for hydroxy shelter is um it's like softer plastic so it's more flexible so i can see how these plastic flaps are harder to to use so here's hydroxy shelter and i'm happy that the weather is warmer today because yesterday there was a sheet of ice right here in front of the shelter I'm going to take it out. I'm going to look inside. I don't think Hydrox peed in it, but I just want to make sure. And uh, yeah, we'll see. It's fish day today, so I split up a can of salmon between these two plates. And I also um, took the leftovers from the inside cats, which was some sardines and some tuna. And I just scraped the leftovers from their plates. Um, and then I split it between these two plates. So if they eat it, they eat it. If they don't, they don't. But that's their meal. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals.
Are you sticking your tongue out at me? Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It's about 11.30 p.m. right now and the cats are having some catnip. Look at Stella. She's sitting on her plate as she licks the catnip off of it. I put some catnip on Boo's arch and around the bottom of the arch and he's going crazy over it. He also has some on a little plate. That's his plate. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> he's tearing the arch apart. There's Splash. Splash is enjoying a plate of catnip also. Simba had some. Simba's in the hallway looking for a pom-pom. Hello, Stella. You're just going to sit on your plate? Simba, don't bite that. Simba, don't bite that. Don't bite the string, Simba. Don't bite the string. Simba likes to bite the strings in half. It's 10.45 a.m. and it is snowing again. We are supposed to get five to seven inches of snow today. And I was hoping we wouldn't get any, but no such luck. Here's the feral cat shelter that Ditto is in. The front door flap is propped open just because it's more difficult for him to get in and out um, when it is put down. And he's really happy in this shelter. If where he was previously sheltering was better than where he is now, he would be where he was previously sheltering. But because um, this has the heated pet mat, and because it is it's pretty nicely insulated, even though the front door is open and there is some cold air getting in the front door, the rest of it is pretty cozy and snug. So I think he feels really safe in here and really warm in here. I just have to keep an eye on it so that, um, you know, the snow on this path leading up to it doesn't build up too much so that um, he can't get in and out. You know, I don't want him to be snowed in. It's 5.34 p.m. and we got another six inches of snow today. Um, so this is Ditto Shelter and I just shoveled out this path that goes to Ditto Shelter. Here is the automatic feeder. So it was so nice because all the snow was melting for a few days. And now we just got all the snow that had melted. It's all back. So that's what's going on there. And this path has been shoveled out for the cats. And there's Ditto. And this is what's going on with Hydrox's shelter. So on the live stream earlier, it looked like Hydrox had moved over to this side of the shelter. And to me, it looked like he made a poop. It looked like he was a little bit constipated and he made a poop. Now, he did this right after Ditto went under the house around here. So, Hydrox went here, Ditto went here, then Hydrox went inside, and the next thing you know, he was pooping. So, I still think he does it to mark his territory. 
he did what we thought he did, so um, thankfully it's not too bad. So I'm going to clean out that potty pad and put a new one in there, but I just wanted to update everyone who watched it. Boo says that I should not get stressed out about anything because when I get stressed out, Boo gets stressed out, right Boo? And Boo says when he gets stressed out, he doesn't like how it makes him feel. It makes him anxious and stressed out himself. So, I have to make a conscious effort to not do that, right, Boo? It's very easy to remain calm and not stressed out when you're not working from home. But when you're working from home and you're dealing with people that you don't agree with, or who don't agree with you, or, or who try to sabotage projects intentionally or unintentionally, or people who, what's the word I'm looking for, are unthoughtful, inconsiderate, um, unprofessional, irresponsible. Those are just some of the words. Sometimes it's very difficult to remain unstressed uh, when there are so many active stressors, right Boo? But Boo's going to challenge me. Boo says that if I get stressed out, he's going to get stressed out. So I have to make sure that I'm not getting stressed out. Okay, Boo? I will do that for you, okay? Look, he's sticking his, he's sticking his tongue out. I will do that for you, Boo, okay? There will be no stress in this room. This will be a stress-free zone. See, it would be better if I had an extra room in this house that I could just turn into a home office. This room used to be my home office until Boo moved in. Now it's become Boo's room and the cat's room. Um, but if I had a bigger house with an extra room, it would be easier. I would just contain everything in that room. Shut the door. Boo does not have to deal with it. Are you sticking your tongue out at me? What are you doing? Oh, you put it back inside your mouth? You put it back inside your mouth? Boo's so happy. He's so happy right now. It's about 2.30 p.m. right now, and I just wanted to share some information. I keep this channel completely unpolitical, so the information that I am sharing is not political in any way, shape, or form. I am merely sharing some information um, as truth just because it's what I have been dealing with for the past several days or actually almost the past week at this point. And that is one of, one of my work projects has gotten um, a lot of press coverage over the past six days and the press coverage that it has gotten is let's say about two-thirds false completely wrong mind-blowingly wrong like where are people getting this information wrong 
And what's happening is that nobody is checking the facts. Nobody is doing any proper research. Uh, websites and companies who say they are news outlets are just repeating false information. They're not researching anything. They're not checking anything. Um, they're certainly not checking facts. And the incorrect information is multiplying. And it has gotten to a point where it is practically impossible to correct just because so much incorrect information has been amplified. And it's really disturbing because seeing how this is happening so quickly and so irresponsibly is kind of scary. And it has me questioning every piece of information that is shared in the news more than I have already been questioning the information. So many years ago, over the course of my career, I have sat in meetings, I've sat in conference rooms, I've sat at conference room tables where companies have literally just said, okay, well, what can we make up to get some information in the newspaper? What can we make up so we can get our brand or our company uh, on the news? And I've listened and I've watched as people have literally made stuff up just to get press coverage. So I always knew not to believe, uh, you know, 100% of everything that was being reported on. But now, after this week, I think it's worse than it has ever, ever been. And the sad fact is that it affects people's lives. Um, it's not affecting my life, but some of the people that I work with, it is a direct reflection of their lives. And it's, it's just horrible how nobody checks facts and nobody wants to um, make sure something is true uh, before they broadcast the information to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not right, right, Boo? It's not right. It is mail time. Let's open up some mail. Let's see what the cat's got. This looks like a card. It says Stella Splash Simba Hydrox Boo and Ditto with smiley face. Isn't that cute? Look at the little cat is sleeping with balls of yarn. That's so cute. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your donation. It says, Dear Lucky Ferals, Stella Splash Simba Hydrox Boo and Ditto. I hope you have an amazing Valentine's Day. I've been a fan for a long time and I have 10 strays near me. Love seeing the videos and they make me so happy. By the way, Boo, you are so cute and I plan on getting some Boo merch. I watch the amazing live streams as well. Enjoy your gift, Alex the Ferret Lover. Alex the Ferret Lover on YouTube. Thank you so much, Alex the Ferret Lover, for this gift. I will put it aside for the cats and the next time I go shopping for them, I'll make sure to buy them something very special. Thank you so much for watching the live streams and thank you so much for thinking of the cats. We hope you've been enjoying the videos. We have another card here. What is this card? Isn't that cute with the two little kittens in the heart-shaped box? 
That's adorable. Ooh, what is this? It's a Visa gift card. That's very nice. Two Lucky Feral, Stella, Boo, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, Hugs and Kittens. Happy Valentine's Day from Eileen. Thank you very much, Eileen, for this adorable card. Thank you for thinking of us for Valentine's Day, and thank you very much for the gift card. It'll be put to very good use. And here's another card. Look at that cat. Isn't that cute? It's licking on a lollipop. That cat has the longest tongue I've ever seen on a cat. Look at that tongue. Wow. Ooh, an Amazon gift card. Two Lucky Ferals, you are the sweetest. Happy Valentine's Day. Stella Boo Splash Simba Hydrox Ditto from Eileen. Thank you so much, Eileen. These Amazon gift cards come in so handy when I need to buy something for the cats that I can't buy in the stores. I pick it up on Amazon. And this card is so cute. Thank you so much. We hope you have a very happy Valentine's Day also. Here's a card. Look at this card. Look at the little cat. It almost looks like Simba. You know the bowl of fruit? Brace yourself. Brace yourself. Hug incoming. Look how cute that is. And this is a card from Eileen also. That looks like Simba when he was a kitten. Thank you very much Eileen for your generous donation. Thank you so much. That is always Cash is always appreciated. I'll put it aside for the cats. We hope you've been enjoying the videos and thank you so much for all of your support. This next envelope came all the way from Germany. I wonder what's in it. I hope I didn't break anything. This says, I immediately thought of you and Boo when I saw this from Enigma 26A. These are masks and look at that look. It looks like Boo poking out of the fabric. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. There's like a little tail poking into the fabric and then here's Boo, he's poking out of the fabric. Oh my gosh, I've never seen these before. These are adorable. So there's one, there's two, and there's three, there's three masks. That means I can have one, grandma can have one, and grandpa can have one. We can all have a boo mask. Thank you so much Enigma for thinking of us and thinking of boo. Here's another package. Let's open this one. We got two PetSmart gift cards. That is so awesome. It says, enjoy your gifts. I want to thank you for sharing your Lucky Ferals with me and my Lucky Ferals. Miss Kitty, Daisy, Jack, and Magic, Boo's identical twin. Call me if there's a problem from Sharon Almaguer, and I'm very sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last name. These gift cards will be put to very good use on cat supplies. Thank you so much for thinking of us. Look who came to help with the mail. It's Simba. Hello, Simba. Are you going to help me open this? Let's open this, Simba. You gonna open it? Let's open this, Simba. What did you get? What did you get, Simba? This says, we can't get enough of seeing Hydrox and Ditto. We care for a feral in our backyard named Chanel. You have lots of mail to open, so we thought you might enjoy this Boo look-alike letter opener from Kristen, Ashlyn, and Braylon. Whoa, thank you guys. Check it out, Simba. Simba approves of it. Look how cute that is. Look at it. It looks like Boo. Simba says he really likes it. Thank you very much, Kristen, Ashlyn, and Braylon. This was a really thoughtful gift. Okay, somebody you gonna help me open this one? Let's use the new letter opener. Oh, it works good. Works good, Simba. Oh. We
we got a Petco gift card. That is so great because I've been buying the potty pads for Hydroxy Shelter at Petco. So thank you very much. This says, hi, Lucky Ferals. Thanks for your videos from JN Dexheimer. Thank you so much, JN, for the gift card. We hope you've been enjoying the videos. Thank you for your support. And we have one more envelope. Let's open this one. This says, I hope this works for you. Thank you for my Christmas card from JN Dexheimer. This is a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. And JN, I don't know if you're psychic, but I have been needing a micro SD card. So I've been good with my SD cards and CR Barboni sent me some SD cards for Christmas. So I'm set with those. But over the past few weeks, I was in two different situations where I needed a micro SD card. And off the top of my head, I forget what they were, but I know I made a mental note that I had to buy a micro SD card and I keep forgetting to do it. And look, I'm holding one in my hand right now. So thank you very, very much. This is going to be put to really good use. Oh, I needed it for my Roku. So what happens is every day the cats like to watch uh, nature videos on my large screen TV in the living room. And I, and I set them up with the YouTube app on Roku and it takes a long time to load because Roku says I need to get a micro SD card to store the channels. And that's what I keep forgetting to do. But now I have one. So Boo and Stella and Splash and Simba are going to be so happy that they don't have to wait for the channels to load anymore. Thank you so much. Simba says thank you very much. Look at this new toy that I got for Simba. It's three pom-poms on a wand toy with a tassel on the end. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. This was actually in Target. It was in the Christmas stocking that they sold. So they sold a Christmas stocking full of cat toys. And this was in it. And it has the wand. And the wand is in two pieces. It wears a piece and there's a piece. It actually hooks together. Or maybe Boo's going to like it. Uh-oh, here comes Simba. Simba just ran down the stairs. Here comes the bell. Somebody's pom poms. Uh oh. Is it gonna go crazy over the pom poms?
Ash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. I'd like to give a shout out to April. C.R. Barboni, and Danielle Kofrod. Thank you so much for your patronage this month and your generous support. It's 5.55 p.m. and I just put out some food for Hydrox and Ditto. They're each getting half of a can of Whole Earth Farms duck pate. And then I chopped up some chicken really fine in my mini food processor. And I put it on top of their food and it looks like, I think that's Ditto enjoying it. I think Hydrox is sitting to the side. Um, I'm sure Hydrox will come and eat the rest. I can't really tell because, you know, these cats look so similar. That could be Hydrox eating. I can't tell from this angle. Um... So what I did today um, was I tried chopping up the boiled chicken that I had left over in my refrigerator in my mini food processor for Boo, and he ate it. He ate it as a snack. Usually he doesn't like um, cooked chicken, but he enjoyed it um, probably because of the small pieces and the texture of it. Um, and then I tried to give some to Stella, but she didn't want it. So, I might use it as a food topper for the inside cats also to see if, if they like it that way. If Ditto eats everything that's on both of these plates, then I'll put another can of food out. Oh, I should also say that I heated up some warm chicken broth uh, and I mixed it into the canned food. So that could be why um, he's really enjoying it. The camera that you see right here is a camera that I was setting up uh, to point it at the feral cat feeder but what happened was that the snow blower cut the wire um, so I have to fix it and I have to rewire it so it's just it's just here right now it's not plugged into anything another thing that just happened a few minutes ago when I was um, preparing the food for Hydrox and Ditto was that Simba, Simba was right here, he was near the back door and when I came to uh, open the door to put the food outside, Ditto was here outside, Simba was here inside, they were like kissing each other through the glass. I thought that was very nice of Simba to uh, be so nice to Ditto and vice versa, but we all know that if the glass was not there uh, it could be a very, very different situation. Simba, do you like Ditto? Simba, are you friends with Ditto? Are you friends with him? Simba says he likes to be friends with everybody. But he says sometimes other cats don't like being friends with him. Like Boo. Simba wants to be friends with Boo. But Boo doesn't want to be friends with Simba. Boo says I'm your father. And therefore I'd rather be your father than your friend. That's what Boo says. But yesterday... Boo almost licked Simba on the head. Like Simba put his head like near Boo and Boo was sniffing it and sniffing it and he almost licked Simba's head and Simba was waiting for Boo to lick his head. He was waiting for it, but Boo didn't do it. But he came so close to doing it. Now Hydrox is eating. It's 7.36 a.m. and look at Simba. He's on top of the armoire. Simba's looking like a big cat today. He's looking all fierce, right, Simba? The window's a little bit open so he could smell the air. Hey, Simba, how you doing? How you doing, Simba? You looking fierce today? Simba says, no, he's just tired. He says, I woke him up. He was sleeping in the penthouse. He says he needs more sleep. He says, I don't get enough sleep either. Simba says, I need to get more sleep so the cats get more sleep. Because the cats tend to sleep when I'm sleeping. Now, the cats do take a nap during the day. But he says, they haven't been getting enough nighttime sleep. And last night, actually... 
Simba and Splash were kind of up and playing and making a lot of noise for a while, right? This morning, they uh, woke up Boo. Boo was sleeping on the bed. And all of a sudden, he heard, like, cats squealing. That's the best way I could describe it. So then Boo had to get up and see what was going on because Boo gets very concerned. Um, so Simba and Splash were up very early. I don't even know if they ever went to bed last night. Right, Simba? Simba, you're so cute. You're such a cute boy, Simba. We got about an inch of snow overnight. So Stella has decided she'd like to smell the air outside and see what's going on. <laughs> Where is Simba? Is Simba looking for trouble? I just got back from the post office and we got a really big box. So we're gonna open it, it's mail time. It says, uh, Ms. and Grandma and Grandpa Lucky Farrell. So this might be a present for everybody. Stella just woke up from her nap because she's nosy and she wants to see what's inside the box. Okay, Stella, let's open it up, okay? It says uno a la volta, which means one at a time. It's very nicely packed. Oh my gosh, look at this. I need to get scissors. It looks like we got dishes to go with the mugs. Check this out. This is Polish pottery and do you see the cats? See the cats? There's cats and there's cat paws in the design. Isn't that cute? This is so cute. Thank you so much. Grandma and Grandpa have been using the cat mugs in some of their cooking videos. They've been really enjoying those mugs. And here's another plate. These are dessert plates, but they're also the perfect size for a snack or a light meal. So I use smaller plates very often. And this is what it says on the back, handcrafted exclusively for Uno a la Volta in Poland. Isn't that nice? And here's two other plates and I will keep these wrapped up for grandma and grandpa and I will give these to them the next time I see them. And these two I'm keeping for myself. And there's a note card inside. It says, please enjoy these blue kitten plates to match the mugs from Janet Stemper. Thank you so much, Janet Stemper. Thank you so much, Janet Stemper. We enjoy the mugs so much and we will enjoy using these plates just as much. It was so nice of you to think of us. Each plate comes with a certificate of authenticity. Uh, Uno Ala Volta LLC certifies that each pottery collectible is handcrafted by our skilled artisans in Brzeg. I don't know how to pronounce that. Poland. In the small village of Brzeg, Poland, skilled artisans continue their centuries-old folk art tradition. 
Each stoneware piece is handcrafted of local clay, meticulously hand-painted using carved sponges and fine brushwork, then glazed and fired at high temperatures for everlasting beauty. It's 9-11 a.m. and look at what's going on here. Stella is hunting squirrels right on top of the TV set. And here's Boo. Boo's been watching from down here. He has his arch and he has his dragonfly. <laughs> I have the wand toy tucked into this chair cushion and there's no way that he's gonna get it out. It's a really firm chair cushion, so he likes it. And here's Simba. Simba's been watching from a few feet away from Boo. It's 2.52 p.m. and Boo's been sleeping. And I'm going to show you how he's sleeping because he's been sleeping like Simba. But somehow Boo knows the minute I turn the camera on. Boo, let's take a look at your belly. Let's look at your belly and let's look at what's going on in your belly. Let's look. Are you still grooming all of your hair out? Okay. Let's look, Boo. Let's look here. Okay. Oh, okay. You're going to show us? <laughs> I might have to do a freeze frame on that. Okay, let's look at your belly. Show us your belly. That's your belly. Let's look at your belly. Boo says he's being shy and modest and he doesn't want people looking at his belly. Come on, Boo. It's okay. It's okay. Everyone's seen your belly before. Everyone has seen it before. They think it's pretty. Boo says he wants some modesty and some privacy. Okay. So one thing that I have noticed is that there is like a lot of static electricity when I do pet him. More so with him than the other cats. But otherwise everything is normal with Boo. Like he's eating, he's drinking, he's pooping, he's peeing, he's playing. So one thing um, I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's getting worse although now it looks like okay you show me your belly boo okay so it's hard because some areas look like the fur is growing back and then in other areas it looks like maybe he's moving on <laughs> to another area like here so what I have noticed is when I touch it <laughs> When I touch his belly, um, he doesn't act like he's in pain. He just acts like like this. Like he's like, pat me, pat me, pat me. Okay, Boo. So like, if he was in pain, <laughs> um, usually he would like... Usually a cat would back away or get mad and try to bite or something like that. He just wants pets and pets and pets. Maybe he hasn't been getting enough attention lately. I've been trying to give him lots of extra attention lately. But it's hard to do because when I do that, then like Stella and Simba and Splash like get upset. So I try to give them all kind of equal amounts. But I do give Boo more attention than any of the other cats because, you know, Stella, Splash, and Simba, they're, you know, a very tight family unit and they have each other and sometimes Boo is kind of a bit of an outsider. Um, but, you know, Boo chose that. Boo chose to be kind of um, not part of their group. He could easily be more part of their group, but he likes to show his dominance like Simba's always trying to uh, be more friendly to Boo and to play with Boo and Boo will just out of nowhere just haul off and you know hit Simba and be very unkind to him for no reason Boo might have a reason um, but I think Boo just likes to throw dominance around and you know he likes to be king of the hill king of the castle right Boo? Boo, you think you're the king. Stella's the queen. You know that, Boo. Boo says he's the king. 
Boo has a very big ego. Right, Boo? Okay, let's look at your belly again. Let's look. Okay, you want to show me the belly? See, it looks like in some areas, in some areas it looks like his fur is growing back. And it, What I have been doing is if I notice him grooming one area a lot, I'll try to distract him with a toy or um, something like that. That's what I've been doing. And I've also been, you know, making sure he's getting... Uh, you know, fish oil, omega-3s in his diet. I've been putting the humidifier on more in this room. Um, I've been reducing stress levels around the house, right, Boo? So if conversations escalate, like say there's a heated debate about something, I just kind of make sure that, um, you know, voices are kept at a normal tone and um, there's not that much stress going on. That's lovely. You're going to show us, show us your belly. <laughs> Look at your belly, boo. Look at your belly. Boo says, pet him. Pet him on the head. Put him on the head. Okay, boo. Okay, boo. This is what Boo would like me to do all day. Just sit here and give him pets. Is he going to keep moving? <laughs> He's going to keep moving until I pet him. Okay, Boo. See, he's in a good mood. Boo's in a very good mood, so... If he was having issues, he would not be in as good a mood. Boo, 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 boo. Boo, 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 boo. Okay, boo. Okay, boo. Simba, are you waiting for crunchies? See how he knows that word? Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It's 10.41 a.m. and I just found one of Simba's toy stashes. Look at all these pom-poms. I'm under the china cabinet in the dining room right now. A few years ago, I posted a video of Simba trying to squeeze himself under this cabinet, but he can't because it's only like a three inch clearance. But look what I just found. Simba's so happy. He's here right next to me. And I just got a yardstick, so I'm gonna start poking all of these toys out. Simba says he can't wait. He can't wait. But let's get them. Where are they going to? Where did they go to? Let's get them out. Let's get them out. Let's rescue all the toys. Oh my gosh, Simba. There's chickens. There's mice. There's, oh, that's the light up, the light up ball. Look at that. Simba's so happy to see all of his friends again. Simba is so close to getting another pom-pom stuck under there. Look at this. Look. Look. I just got them out. I just got them out, Simba. Why are you putting one back under there? Huh? It's 11 a.m. And here's Hydrax and Ditto. I just put out some food for them. I don't know why they're sharing a plate. There's two plates of food. So here's their plate that they're eating. There's another plate right there. There's two plates from last night that I have to throw out. This is the automatic feeder. And yesterday was the first day that I noticed that the bowl was empty. 
So every day I check the bowl and there's usually a whole bunch of dry food in the bowl. Yesterday there's no food so that means the feeder is empty. Either that or means the feeder's not working anymore because I know the batteries in the feeder were getting low. So either the batteries are dead on the feeder, uh, the extreme cold weather has um, done something to the feeder to make it not work, or uh, the most likely situation is that it's out of food. Um, but it's still very much snowed in. It would be a very big project to dig that out, so instead what I'm just going to do is put bowls of dry food out during the day, and whatever's left over, you know, the raccoons or skunks can eat. That gives me more control over it. So now Hydrox and Ditto are eating on separate plates. The other, the one positive thing about the automatic feeder being empty is that Hydrox and Ditto won't rely on it as their main meal because I feel like they've been doing that lately. They've been eating mostly the dry food out of the feeder and then when I feed them the good food, they don't eat it. But today, they're eating it because there's no dry food in the feeder. So by their not being dry food in the feeder, they will then eat the healthier wet food and raw food that I put out for them. So that is the one positive thing about the feeder being empty. It's 6.42 p.m. and I just gave more food to Hydrox and Ditto. So they had some food a little while ago, which they ate. So then I just put more food out, and the two of them want to eat on the same plate. I don't know why. Just now, it looks like Ditto went over to the other plate. Sometimes it's hard to tell them apart um, from this angle, um, but I'm pretty sure that's Ditto on the left. Um, so if they eat all this food, I'll give them more. And yeah, this is what happens when the there's no dry food in the feeder. Um, they eat more of the wet food that I put out because they're not filled up on dry food, so that's what's going on right now. It's 10.30 a.m. I just walked past the living room and saw this. Stella and Splash are sharing some cat grass this morning. The cats have had this cat grass for several days now because Stella noticed it growing um, on a counter near a window. So I said, okay, you guys could have it. It was only a few inches tall. And they've been doing a really good job of keeping it nice and trimmed. So I used to wait until it was about this tall before I gave it to them. Now I gave it to them when it was about maybe half this height. They've all been enjoying it, every single cat. When Boo plays with toys, he likes to hide behind this cat grass. Hey Stella, how are you? Do you like your cat grass? You could eat the cat grass. You're not doing anything wrong, you could eat it. It's there for you to eat it. You could eat the cat grass, enjoy your cat grass. Today's Valentine's Day, I might go and buy the cats some fresh catnip. They like that as a treat. It's 10.53 a.m. and I'm outside with Hydrox and there's Ditto and I'm going to open up Hydrox's shelter just to see what's going on in there. It does not look like he's been peeing in the shelter every day like he was before, but I'm just going to check and I'll probably put a new... Uh, training pet in there just because the ones that are in there are probably a little bit dirty. Hello, Ditto. I just gave them each a plate of food. They're sharing half a can of Whole Earth Farms turkey and they're each getting a tablespoon of crunchies. If they eat all that, I could put more food out for them. There's the empty crunchy bowl from yesterday. I put out some crunchies last night. I don't know if they finished them or some of the other animals came and finished them. I also put some water in the heated kitty cafe for them. So they have fresh water and they have food and 
I don't know why they prefer eating on the same plate. There's another plate there. They don't have to eat off the same plate. It's the same food on each plate. Hydrox and Ditto finished all of the food that I gave them, like all of it, not even one crunchy left. So I just opened another can, it's a 5.5 ounce can of the Whole Earth Farms turkey. And I split it on two plates and I don't know why, but they keep like sharing off the same plate. And um, what happened was when I was putting the food on the plate, Hydrox came right up to the plate and he was like ready to eat it on the plate as I was putting the food on the plate. That's a first for Hydrox. So if they eat this, I'll give them more, but we'll see. It's about 4 p.m. right now. Boo's taking a nap on his day sofa. Splash is taking a nap on the bed. Stella's taking a nap on the bed. Also, she's laying on her new pillow. There's Simba. He just came out of the penthouse where he was taking a nap. All the cats are napping today. It's a really good day for taking naps. Right, Splash? Splash says, yes, it's a perfect day for taking naps. It's 8.15 p.m. and look at what's going on here. Hijacks and Ditto are at the back door. Let me tell you why. Because they, they hang out in their shelters, right? And then I open the back door and I knock on the glass. I knock on the glass. And then they come out of their shelter and they come over here looking for food. Like they have room service. How you doing, Ditto? You hungry? I just gave them each a very big plate of food. They're having half of a 5.5 ounce can of the Whole Earth Farms. Um, I think it's the turkey. And then they each have like three tablespoons of crunchies because they do like those. I don't know why they have to eat off the same plate. There's two plates there. Okay, maybe they'll take turns. Maybe not. Come on guys, there's, there's another plate. Go ahead, Hydrox. Eat off the other plate. Move over. It's 8.45 p.m. and I'm here with the cats. We've been playing with the wand toy with the pom-poms on it. Stella's laying on top of it right now. But I wanted to show you Simba because he is so smart. So this little crunchy plate right here, um, a little plate was on the, uh, it's been on the play rug because I gave Boo a little bit of food on it earlier today. Um, and Simba's been laying right near it. He was laying closer than he is now. And then watch what happens. Watch what happens when I say the word. Simba, do you want some crunchies? Do you think it's time for crunchies, Simba? Simba, are you waiting for crunchies? See how he knows that word? Simba knows. Simba, what kind of crunchies would you like? Is there a certain flavor you want today? Tell me your favorite flavor of crunchies. What kind of crunchies do you want? <laughs> He just went over to the uh, crunchy jar. <laughs> Simba. Simba, you want some crunchies? You want some crunchies? Do you? Or would you rather have some dried fish? Do you want dried fish or do you want crunchies? Dried fish or crunchies? Do you want minnows or crunchies? Stella's like, what kind of stupid question is that? We want crunchies. But you didn't eat your dinner yet. You guys still have to eat dinner. We have to go eat dinner. You want dinner? 
You want dinner or you want crunchies? Do you want dinner or crunchies? Which one? All right, we're going to go eat dinner and then later we could have crunchies, right, Simba? Later? Simba! You want crunchies? Okay, we'll have some later, but first we eat dinner. Stella, Stella, would you like some crunchies? They're so cute. Look how cute these cats are. Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. It's a little bit after 1 p.m. right now, and the snow is melting really nicely today. So I uh, was able to dig out the automatic feeder, and I just refilled it. It was completely empty. So I refilled it with dry cat food. I'm going to put the roof back on it and then that'll be good at least. Here's Ditto. He's been watching me. He's like, what are you doing? As you can see, this pile of snow is still like twice the size of him. This is a massive pile of snow. How you doing, Ditto? You okay today? So I gave them food. This is the breakfast that I put out for Hydrox and Ditto. There's two plates of this, which is some uh, canned food, which they did not want to eat. So then I put some crunchies on it and they did not want to eat that either. So I'm just going to move these off the back step. It's 2.35 p.m. I thought that was Hydrox hanging out by the back door on the mat, but it's Ditto. Look, it's Ditto and there's Hydrox. They're looking at me like, what's going on? They have food outside. There's some water outside. The feeder is full, so I guess they're just enjoying the sunshine. I want to go outside and enjoy some sunshine also. This is Boo's day sofa, and this is where he's been spending a lot of time recently. And this plaid fabric on top of it is plush material, so it's made out of like polyester. And I believe this is a plush, a little plush blanket also. And the other day I was laying on this uh, day sofa, just relaxing and Boo um, was laying with me and I petted him and I got the worst static shock that I've ever had. Like it was bad. It was really bad and it, it usually when you get like a static electricity shock it's usually pretty quick but this seemed to last for several seconds and i was like oh my gosh if i felt that i wonder if boo felt that and i have noticed that out of all the cats he's the only one that i've been getting static electricity off of with the other cats i don't get static electricity and then today i just had another really bad shock off of him and I noticed today he's also been grooming himself a lot. So I'm wondering how much of his over grooming is being caused by static electricity. So I did some research and there is a correlation between static electricity and over grooming. Static electricity can be a cause for over grooming. Then I started to look into ways to reduce static electricity and what can cause it. So dry air causes static electricity and this winter it's been really dry. I do have a small humidifier running in this room, but I don't know how much it's helping. Another thing that causes static electricity is artificial fabrics, like this plush blanket. These polyester blankets on Boo's bed uh, can be contributing to his static electricity. Now, the other cats mostly lay on my bed, and I have a white linen duvet cover on my bed and linen does not hold static charges and it does not contribute to static electricity so what i'm going to do is find another piece of linen i think i have another duvet cover somewhere uh, i know i have some linen sheets and i'm going to put that on this day sofa instead and i'm going to be curious to see if it cuts back on boo's uh, static electricity issue 
and uh, also his over grooming. I just put a linen duvet cover over Boo's day sofa. It's like a dusty aqua color or like a grayish blue. Um, I put it right on top of the plush blankets. We'll see if this works and if not I can always take those plush blankets off. I also swapped out uh, the little cat blanket and this one uh, I think is made out of cotton and hopefully it won't make as much static as the plush does. So we'll see if Boo likes it. Boo just jumped onto the day sofa and he's, uh, he's laying on the linen and then I believe this is cotton, I think. Maybe it's a cotton polyester blend, but I don't know, it feels like cotton. Hopefully, if he lays in the linen, it'll kind of absorb some of the static electricity. All right, boop. It's about 11 a.m. right now and I've been out running some errands this morning. I just got back and I opened up Hydrox's shelter so I could clean it out. We're expecting another winter storm tomorrow so I want to make sure that he's all set up and I just want to show you what's going on in here. So there's been three of the training pads. There's one here which is really um, on the bottom. Here's the heated pet mat and it has a training pad wrapped around it. And then I put another pad just on top of it. And if he's going to do anything in the shelter, he usually does it on the other pad that's just on top. So I take that out and replace it. And it's been several days now since I've opened up this shelter. And there's uh, a training pad here that's really dirty. It's all bunched up, but he has not peed in here at all. There's no signs of any pee or poop. Um, so that is really good. Um, so I'm just gonna clean it out now. Here's Ditto. He's laying in the sun in front of his shelter. He's very happy. And here's Hydrox. He's laying in the sun um, over here by the house. It does look like uh, his eye is a little bit watery, but could be from the cold. Sometimes he gets that from the cold. One other thing that I want to point out is that it looks like the back door to this shelter is now accessible. If you look through the front door, you can see all the way through to the back of the shelter. You can see some snow there, but it's not taller than the door anymore. So we had a lot of snow melts yesterday, so it looks like the back door is accessible again. It's 8.30 a.m. and it started to snow, I don't know, maybe like a half hour ago. We're supposed to get snow all day. The forecast keeps changing. The original forecast was like six to eight inches and then I'm hearing like a foot of snow and the last thing I heard was four to six inches. So I'm hoping we only get a few inches and then we're done. We've already had too much snow. Just when the snow was melting, now we have more. So Ditto is in his shelter. There's Hydrox. Hydrox is hanging out underneath the house. He was in his shelter, but I had to clean it out. So. After talking about how he's been so good with it, he has not been using it as a litter box. I woke up this morning, I looked at the live stream, and yeah, he peed in the shelter. So I just had to take one of the training pads out and put a new one in, and he could go back in his shelter anytime he wants. The other thing that I had to do this morning was to adjust this feeding station. So in this kind of crate thing, uh, this is what the camera is attached to. There's a live stream. Uh, pointing at this feeder and this used to be maybe a foot back here You could probably see it in the snow where it used to be but with the snow um, I wanted to protect the camera from like snow piling up in front of it So I wanted to put it so the cameras under the table which it is now this table used to be in this direction So I just changed the direction of the table um, I made sure the heated kitty cafe is under it and there's also a heated water bowl on the other side. That is the large heated water bowl. Unfortunately, I can't move it any farther under the table because it, the cord is basically stuck under like an iceberg of snow. So for now, it's fine. I actually don't mind it half sticking out because as the snow falls into it, the snow will melt. 
and it will actually keep that bowl supplied with water. So here's the camera. Uh, it has a really nice view of everything. I actually like the view better this way than it was yesterday. I just opened a large can of cat food, like an 11 ounce can, and I filled up these two bowls for the heated kitty cafe. I just have to add some water to them because the heated kitty cafe is heated, um, it can dry this food out and if I add some water to it, it'll stay um, moister longer. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll put this back in the kitty cafe and then we're good to go for now. I'm here with Simba and look what I have. I have a pom-pom on a stick. I use these skewers to clean out the vacuum and I saw a pom-pom on the ground. And I said, I wonder what would happen if I put a pom-pom on a stick. I wonder if Simba would like it and he loves it. This reminds me of um, a mallet. Like if you've ever played uh, the marimba or the xylophone or the vibraphone, this is exactly like what you play them with, like a mallet. And they do have... Um, some felt mallets so you can play softer and they have harder rubber mallets so you could play louder. Right Simba? This is also kind of like when you go to the doctor's office and they hit your knee to check your reflexes. Almost. Almost. Right Simba? He says, that's his, it's his, it's his pom-pom. It's like a cake pop also. It's kind of like a cake pop on a really long stick. Do they sell cake pops for cats? Just not obviously made out of cake. I wonder if I could make a cake pop for the cats. I made cupcakes for the cats that time. Maybe I could make some cake pops for them. Oh, he took it. The other end of this is sharp, so. I just want to be careful with it. You want it? You want the pom-pom on the stick? Whoop, that's what you did with it. Be careful, don't poke yourself. Don't poke yourself with the palm, palm stick. We could pet Simba with the palm, palm. Pet him with the palm, palm. And pet him with the palm, palm. I'm shaking your pom-pom, Simba. Shake your pom-pom. Shake your pom-pom. Okay, you had enough of it? Here's Boo. Would Boo like a pom-pom on a stick? Boo, you want a pom-pom on a stick? Oh, Boo likes it too. I have to get some kind of stick that's not so sharp on the other end. I just stuck myself with it.
Stella, you want the pom pom? Pom pom. Want the pom pom, Stella? It is 12.45 p.m. and so far we've gotten another three to four inches of snow but thankfully it's really light snow so far. So I just cleared a path to Ditto Shelter and a path to the side of the house and I cleared off the patio and I cleared off uh, the feeding station and because of the wires, all these cameras are on wires, um, I have to be really careful with the snowblower, um, so if the snowblower comes back here, it potentially can cut the wires, so it's better to do it by hand. Here's the shelter Hydrax stays in, and this has all been shoveled out. And Hydrax was inside, but the shovel scared him, so then he, he fled. And there is also this Rubbermaid shelter under the house, so um, there are other cats around. They could use this if they want to. Hydrox and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. Hello, Boo. What are you doing? Right now it's about 7.30 p.m. and Boo's been hanging out with me. He's been hanging out on the, uh, he's been hanging out in the cat tower and I've been uh, working on my laptop. And here's Simba. Simba's been sleeping. He just got up. The minute I turned the camera on, all of a sudden they got to start moving around. I was going to show you how cute Boo looked in the cat tower, but I guess not. This whole play rug area is a mess because the cats had a catnip party last night. So, um, there's like toys all over and boas. And there's pom-poms all over the house. Actually, we don't know where most of them are. Simba, did you have fun with your pom-poms? It's 12, 11 p.m. And I was gonna show you Ditto because he was laying in the sun. They're really happy that it's sunny out. There's Hydrox and there's Ditto. And they've just been hanging out in the sun. I just opened the back door. We're gonna put some food out for them. I saw them eat out of the feeder earlier today. So. I'm going to give them some food. There's a whole lot of reflections on the glass, but I split up what was left of Boo's breakfast. So some of the homemade raw food was left over from Boo. And I split that between Hydrox and Ditto. And I added some canned food to it. So it's on their plates. I put some herbs on their plates also. A multivitamin formula and an immunity boost formula. And Hydrox really loves the food, so that's what they're getting. It's about 2 p.m. and I just dug a path to the greenhouse. It's been buried in snow for the past several weeks now. Um, I believe today is February 21st as I'm filming this. Um, and there's a temperature sensor in the greenhouse that was indicating it was 80 degrees in there today because it's been really sunny and it warmed up a little bit so thankfully some of the snow is melting. The snow, um, when I was shoveling it, it's really hard and compacted. It, it's basically like shoveling blocks of ice. 
which isn't fun. And this is the first time that I've been able to open this greenhouse um, in a very long time. I don't remember the last time that I was able to open it. And I was curious to see if my Meyer lemon tree is still alive. And it's the green, the green plant in the middle. So happily, that seems to have survived the winter um, because of the Christmas tree lights that I've had wrapped around it. And the Christmas tree lights have been keeping this greenhouse uh, warmer than the outside temperature, which is good. Um, there's mostly empty pots in here. Um, on the bottom, here's a lip forever. Uh, there's some strawberries here. And then these were some outside plants that I put in here. I just was curious to see, you know, would they survive the winter? Um, they had some geraniums in them. And then geraniums stayed green until... Um, the last time I checked was right before all this snow happened. When all the snow happened, all of the temperatures uh, really dropped a lot. And it looks like everything in this pot uh, is probably dead. There might still be some life in this pot. Like, there's some green here. There's a little bit of green there. So we'll see what happens. But there's definitely green down there with some strawberries. And there's definitely green here. And um, this was my main curiosity. Could I keep this Meyer lemon alive through the winter? Because last year I brought it inside. This year I could not do that. So I'm going to give it some water. And then I'm going to uh, shut the greenhouse again. The other reason why I wanted to dig a path and make this greenhouse accessible is because I've been starting some seedlings inside and I'd like to start some in here soon, um, if not even maybe later today, and see how that goes. I've had a lot of success with that in the past, so we'll see. It's about 2.15 p.m., and look at Hydrox. He's laying in the sun over here. If you ever wonder why Hydrox's fur is so dirty, it's because he lays in dirt. That's why Ditto's fur is so dirty also. They lay in dirt. Feral cats like to lay in dirt. And when it's muddy from melting snow, it makes them muddy. Then their fur gets muddy. But right now, Hydrox is really happy. He's a very happy boy. It is mail time. And all of the cats are laying somewhere in the sun Boo's in his room, and Simba's on the bed, and Splash is on the cat tower, and Stella's in the penthouse. Let's see if I could get someone to come over here and help me. Hey guys, it's mail time! Is anybody gonna help me with the mail? Boo! Stella! Simba! Splash! Is anyone gonna help me open mail? Here comes Boo. Boo's walking over. Hello, Boo. Boo, you gonna help me? Come here, Boo. There's Boo. Boo says he's gonna help me. Okay, Boo. Let's open some mail, Boo. Look, you got a card. You wanna open the card? You wanna smell it? Okay, Boo, I give you a crunchy so you can help me. Okay, let's open this. Let's open the card. It's taped. It's taped so well, I'm gonna have to open the bottom. I love this new letter opener. Come here, Boo, come and help me. Look at the cute kitten, it kinda looks like a mini Stella. Isn't that adorable? It's very cute. Oh, thank you very much for the donation. It says, Dear Grandma Farrell and Lucky Farrells, thank you for the Christmas card. I love all your videos. Happy New Year. I have three cats, Lucy, Jennifer, and Lily. I am sending a dollar for the kitty cats from Jody Lynn Langford. And I feed Bella a feral cat. Thank you so much, Jody, or is it Jody Lynn, for your very nice donation. I'll put it aside so. The cats can get some treats with it. We're glad you're enjoying the videos. We got another card here, boo. This card has some hearts on it. Let me use my opener. Let 
Look how cute. It says Happy Valentine's Day. And see the orange tabby? That's very nice. Oh, look at this. Look at that. It says, Hope you're feline the love today. This is from Nicole LaRue and Chocho. I think Nicole got a new cat. It's about 19 days I have a new cat. Male, Tonkinese, chocolate point, color mink, 11 and a half years, 9 and a half pounds, spade, declawed, four paws. His new name is Chocho, which is an Asian name. What a pretty cat. He came with a lot of stuff. He does not travel lightly. Five bags at least. Wow. He listens to Lucky Farrell's videos. Now he knows Lady LF and Stella and Simba and Splash and Boo and Hydrox and Ditto and Grandma and Grandpa Farrell's. Both of us love listening to your voice and seeing your animal company. Here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, we still are in red area. No restaurants, no party, yes to commercial center, pharmacy, grocery, no theater, movies. It is very hard for not seeing friends and family. Yes, I imagine that would be horrible. I'm really tired of all these uh, closures. On this photo, you can also see my floor color change from near orange to this yellow pale. It is a big difference and Chocho fits with this new color. See Chocho? See Chocho in the floor? It looks very nice. Happy Valentine's Day to you, your family, and your pets from Nicole LaRue and Chocho. He kind of looks like Boo in the face. The facial features look like Boo. Thank you so much for the Valentine's Day card, Nicole. And thank you so much for sharing a photo of your new cat, Chocho. I wish you guys much happiness. This looks like another card. Let's open this. This says Happy Valentine's Day. Whoa, look at that. Look at that pop-up. That's an incredible pop-up card. This says someone like you deserves a truly adorable day. Look at all these kittens. That is so cute. And it says, to the Lucky Ferals, Happy Valentine's Day, Barbara Heaton. Thank you so much, Barbara. And she also enclosed a $20 vanilla visa. Thank you so much. That'll be put to good use on cat supplies. We hope you had a very nice Valentine's Day also. Boo has moved over to a scratch and roll. He says he doesn't want to help me. He just wants to watch. Okay, Boo, you could do that. Okay, we have a package here. Let's open this. We got a Petco gift card. That is awesome. $25 to Petco. This is the only note that is enclosed. It says ordered by Lisa H. So thank you so much, Lisa H. Is that Lisa have a cost? If it is, thank you so much. And if not, please leave a comment below and let me know that you sent this gift card. I will put this to very good use the next time I go to Petco. Here's another package. Let's see what's in here. Ooh, check this out. We have some amazing grass, amazing trio, barley grass, wheatgrass, and alfalfa. And this is one of the supplements that I put in the raw cat food that I make for the cats. So in some of the commercial cat food that you buy in a can, for example, they put uh, peas or carrots or some kinds of vegetables or plant matter that cats in nature don't normally eat. And I supplement the raw food that I make um, with this because it's basically a form of dried and powdered cat grass. So cats love chewing on grass. When cats live in nature, they eat grass. Um, feral cats will munch on grass and some plants. It is a part of their diet. It's a small part of their diet, but it could be a very important part of their diet. Um, so that's why I use this. Uh, so thank you so much.
And this one says, enjoy your gift from Lisa Havacost. So maybe I was right when I said the other one was from Lisa Havacost. Thank you so much, Lisa, for thinking of us and for sending us these goodies. Now we have a box to open. Let's see what's in this box. You know what? I think I need my other opener because this one's really tough to get into. Someone used super strong packing tape on this. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Look, guys, look. It says nuts and chews. It's a one pound box of nuts and chews. This might be from C's Candy. Yeah, look, it says C's Candy on the wrapping paper. Whoa. C's Candy is very good candy. Look at the card, isn't that cute? There's Stella. That kind of looks like Simbo a little bit. There's some fish. It says, Grandma and all the Lucky Feral sending you happy Valentine fishes. I'm sure all the indoor LFs would love some fishes to play with, but this gift on Valentine's Day is for the two-legged caretakers. Thanks for all you do for them and for sharing with us. Janet in San Francisco. Thank you so much, Janet, for this awesome card. Now I'm going to open this. A very pretty Valentine's paper. Wow, look at that. C's Famous Old Time Candies. Don't they look good? They smell really good also. I am going to have this one. I'll have just one right now. And I'll put the rest aside. And I'll share some with Grandma and Grandpa. The next time that I see them. Thank you so much for thinking of us and sending us this sweet treat. I have one more package to open and I know what this is because I bought this for the cats on Amazon. So the other day I was playing with Boo and his dragonfly and Simba was playing also and the the string that connects the dragonfly to the wand uh, got cut in half and I was having a very hard time trying to reattach it and I was like you know what? I'm just gonna buy some more wand toys and they don't sell just the wands this is the wand that we have we've gone through quite a few of these because Simba likes to reverse engineer everything and instead of going after the toy he goes after the wand and um we have, uh, you know, various kinds of broken wands which have been discarded. And this is the last wand. And these are the telescoping wands. They kind of, you know, extend. So I needed, I needed to buy some more. I figured that would be the easiest thing to do. So this is what I bought. I believe this was three wands for like $6. I wish someone just sold the wands because I don't need the toys. I have so many toy attachments. I just need the wands. So this is what I ended up getting, but as you notice, there's only two wands. And I was pretty sure the one I ordered had three wands. But um, that's what this is. And here's Boo. He hears, he's like, what's going on here? Let's open this up, Boo. In the meanwhile, I was able to fix this. I don't know if you could see it, but it's been knotted in two separate places because it's been broken twice. And the string is quite small now because it's been knotted so many times. What I should do and what I need to do is learn how to um, kind of make these connections myself. Um, I don't know what kind of hardware this is. They look like, um, like crimp. Um, I don't know what you call them, 
they're like, um, the, I don't know if they're crimp ties or what, but, um, like for jewelry making supplies, I've used those in the past, but I would also need to get some, like, fishing, fishing line. So here are the new ones, and right off the bat, I could tell that this, this line is quite a bit thicker, and this has, um, like a lobster clasp on the end of it. Yeah. Both of these lines are actually thicker. Boo's ready to play. Boo, what do you want to play with? You want to play with one of these? He says there's no dragonflies. I know, Boo, there's no dragonflies in here. What are we going to play with? You want to play with the worm? How about this worm? This is a nice looking worm. It looks kind of natural, right? I hate when they put these bells on them. I really like the colors on this one because it really makes it seem like it's some kind of uh, animal. I was just about to compare the new wand with the old wand and can you see what happened here? See what happened to the old wand? Like it literally just snapped in half. It's been used so many times and I, I know the camera is probably having a very hard time uh, focusing because these are so narrow but it's a good thing uh, I opened the new wands today. Uh, because the old one, literally, uh, it snaps, so this is going to have to be thrown out. I put a new dragonfly toy on the other wand.
Kumba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. It is 10.20 a.m. and there's Ditto. We're very happy to see Ditto today. And I checked the live stream a little while ago and Hydrox is in a shelter. And I just thought I would tell you what happened last night because I was not filming anything last night because I was too involved uh, in what was going on on the live stream. 
So I was giving the cats crunchies in the living room maybe around 11 p.m. But I should say prior to that, sometime, I don't know, maybe around 10 p.m. or something, uh, we heard a cat fight outside. And I was like, oh my gosh, who is that? And I checked the live stream and both Ditto and Hydrox appeared to be in their shelters at the time. So at least I knew it wasn't them. I had no idea who it was, um, but I knew it wasn't them. And the thing is around here, um, if there's a, an animal fight, you can usually hear it even if it's not in your own yard. If it's a few yards away, um, you could still hear it. Um, and it sounded like that one was a few yards away, but I wanted to check anyway. Then around 11 p.m. when I was giving the cats crunchies, um, we heard like a bang noise, not like a loud bang, like a firecracker, but a bang noise like, almost like when a cat jumps off a cat tower, but all the cats were eating crunchies uh, in the living room. So I know it wasn't one of the cats or a bang like um, if a chair falls over or something like that. Um, so I was like, oh my gosh, it sounds like something happened on the patio. And um, I went into Boo's room and I looked out the window and right about here, I saw a raccoon. And the raccoon was like walking around looking for food or something. But when it saw me, um, it stood here on its hind legs. And at one point, I thought it was going to uh, climb up on this chair. This is just like a, a chair that I have here. Um, at one point, I thought it was going to get on this chair and then, you know, um, kind of uh, look at me in the window. Uh, it did not do that. It just kind of stood on its hind legs and I was like, go away. You know, I was just kind of talking to it. And um, uh, I saw it then like walk, walk down onto the patio. Now, at that point, Ditto was in a shelter. And Hydrox, um, I thought he was in his shelter. To be honest, I don't know if he was in his shelter or not because I was looking out of the window. Actually, I don't think he was in his shelter at that time because in the time it took me to uh, turn a computer on and open up uh, a browser with a live stream on it, um, the next thing I remember seeing is the raccoon climbing into Hydrox's shelter. And Hydrox was not in his shelter at that time. So I was like, oh my gosh, there's a raccoon in Hydrox's shelter. And everyone in the chat room was like freaking out. They're like, oh no, that's not good. So because of all of the snow that we've had, I actually have a snow shovel inside here uh, in, in my kitchen, um, kind of like against the door. Um, so I grabbed the snow shovel and I went outside and I started banging on the shelter. So the raccoon left the shelter and then it came right back in. And this raccoon, when I saw that it did that, I was like, something is not right with this raccoon because normally raccoons will just totally run away. And this raccoon did not run away. And what it started to do, it started to then tear up what was inside of Hydrox's shelter. Um, so I have the heated pet map and then I have three training pads on top of it, like wee wee pads. And it started just tearing them apart. And I was like, oh my gosh, it kind of looked like it was going to make itself a bed in there and curl up and go to sleep. And I did not want that to happen. So once again, I went out there with the shovel, banged on the shelter. It did not want to leave, like at all, did not want to leave. Hello, Simba. Simba says he's very happy that Ditto and Hydrox are safe. So, so um, I think it was my third or fourth attempt to get the raccoon out of the shelter by banging on the side of it with the shovel that the raccoon finally left the shelter. Simba says it was a very stressful situation. So what happened was after the raccoon left the shelter, it, uh, it walked through here and then it came over here and on the side of the house here, I have two solar panels they're raised up off the ground and underneath the solar panels, there's like a little bench and um, the cats like to lay under there. It's a little kind of like sheltered nook for them. So I heard uh, the raccoon um, in that area. I'm like, what is it doing over there? I, I was like, I hope Hydrox is not under there um, because I didn't want Hydrox to be kind of uh, laying under there and then the raccoon's gonna come and um, you know, have issues with Hydrox. So after I heard that, I looked out the window again, and the next thing I saw was the raccoon going up to Ditto's shelter. Meanwhile, Ditto's in the shelter, and I thought Ditto would just kind of paw at the raccoon, and then it would leave. 
but that was not the case this was a very aggressive raccoon and it just started like attacking ditto basically trying to attack ditto all of the feral cat shelters in this yard have two doors they have an entrance and an exit or you could say two exits or two entrances it doesn't matter they have two doors the reason why is because of situations like this so if you have an animal trying to come in one door the cat inside the shelter can turn around and go out the other door unfortunately the shelter that ditto has been in the back door of it, the door on the other side that we don't see, has been pretty much snowed in. And it was cleared out for a while when the snow melted, but then we got more snow. So instead of going out the other door, and it could be Ditto did not want to turn his back on the raccoon also, that could be another issue. Um, what Ditto did was literally, like literally flew out of the shelter over the raccoon that was trying to get into the shelter um, and then down these paths. Thankfully, I have the paths uh, shoveled out for the cats because they totally used them last night. So he ran down this path around here and down the other path and then um, down through the yard and that raccoon chased him the whole way like on his pretty much on his tail I mean they were probably like a foot apart and it was kind of like a cartoon but literally ditto went like running full speed and the raccoon was right after him full speed now the one positive about that situation is that I did not hear any kind of animal fight anytime after that um, if the raccoon would have caught up with Ditto and, and if there would have been a fight, I would assume I would have heard it because, you know, uh, fell cats, uh, they do, you know, screech and scream when they're in a fight and raccoons do the same thing. They, they all vocalize when they're fighting. So I did not hear that. So I'm hoping that is the case. So it was a very stressful situation and... It could be that the raccoon was just very aggressive because it was hungry. Um, it had to be really thin to get into Hydrox's shelter. It had to be small and thin to get in there because the doors are not, they're not large doors. They're not made for, uh, you know, large raccoons. So it had to be small to get in there. Um, I think it was starving because with all of this snow and the snow has been here for weeks now, um, it's nearly impossible for a lot of the wildlife uh, to find food. So I would think um, a lot of the wildlife is very, very hungry. Um, so that's that's what it could be. Um, some people say it could be a rabid raccoon, uh, could have rabies. That's what it could be too. Um, we don't know. I've heard that raccoons die within a few days of being infected with rabies. Also, when raccoons have rabies, they exhibit other symptoms that this raccoon did not exhibit. This raccoon looked perfectly normal. Uh, the only thing was it was acting very aggressively. Um, it did not, uh, it was not stumbling around. It did not look disoriented. It was not foaming at the mouth. Um, uh, it did not look sick or lethargic or anything like that or any of these symptoms of of a uh, of a raccoon infected with rabies. So what happened was eventually Hydrox came back and Hydrox was hanging out around the side of the house and then Ditto came back and Ditto was hanging out here by the back door. And then um, Hydrox went inside of Ditto's shelter and that's where Hydrox spent his night inside of Ditto's shelter and I don't know where Ditto spent his night. Uh, he might have gone back to wherever he was sheltering before he moved into this shelter. Um, but it was definitely very stressful. And um, I did contact animal control about the raccoon, about an aggressive raccoon being in the area. Here's Hydrox. Um, so they were aware of that. Uh, they also told me to contact local police. And, you know, the local police... Um, they're like, they really can't do much unless the animal is contained. But they eventually did send um, um, one or two of their vehicles here um, with searchlights and spotlights to kind of um, see if they could locate uh, the animal. But you know what, when you're living uh, along a, a wooded area, and not just a small wooded area, it, it goes on for a while, um, even if you see a raccoon, you don't know if it's the raccoon that's being aggressive um, unless you see 
the raccoon specifically being aggressive. So, um, you know, it's good that they made an effort. It's good that, you know, they came out and they're like, okay, we'll take a look. But, you know, I, I didn't expect much. Um, but at least um, I did put a report in. So if anyone else sees an aggressive raccoon or if it does end up like, having rabies or something, I did what I could. Um, so that's the situation. I'm going to give the cat some food because there's no food outside right now. So if you want to check in on Hydrox and Ditto, please make sure to subscribe to Lucky Ferrell's Live because that's where the live streams now live. They live on a separate channel. And I can put a link to that channel in the description below this video. I can also put a link to it in a pinned comment um, if you'd like to um, just check in on them every now and then see what's going on with the live stream or or if you want to chat with fellow cat people there's usually always someone uh, very helpful um, in the chat so this is the scene of the crime from last night when the raccoon burglar uh, broke into Hydrox's shelter and this is how it trashed the place so thankfully uh, it looks like it was only tearing up the uh, training pads um, I was afraid it kind of looked like it might have been actually um, getting into the heated pet match. So thankfully it did not do that. Um, so today I'm getting rid of all of those training pads and I am going to be um, putting three new training pads in and yeah, hopefully the raccoon will stay out. But that's the door. Um, it's either six inches by six inches or five inches by five inches. It's not a big door at all. It is 1.38 p.m. and it is snowing again. I had no idea that it was going to snow today because the forecast I was looking at said it was going to be a snowy mix, meaning kind of just like uh, rain and snow and some sleet and stuff like that. So it's just been nonstop snow all day so far. Hello, Splash. How are you doing? Listen, Splash, I gotta go out. I gotta go to the post office. You want me to get you something while I'm out? You want anything from Petco? You want me to pick you up something from Petco? He's thinking about it. He says, no, he has everything he needs. Right, Splash? With everything you need. He has food. He has water. He has lots of toys. He has crunchies. He has litter. He has everything. Splash, you got everything you need. You want me to pick you up something from somewhere else? He says, no, he's a cat. He doesn't need anything from anywhere else. He says, maybe another cat tower. You want another cat tower, Splash? You want another cat tower? Where would you like to put it? You want a taller cat tower somewhere? No, Splash says he's good. Splash says he's perfectly happy, right, Splash? Stella, you want me to get you something from Petco? Would you like something from PetSmart? No, you say you're good too? Still says she's good. She has everything she needs. Splash, you want to go with me? You want to go in the car with me? You want to get in a carrier and we could go for a ride together? He says no. He's very happy here on the bed. How you doing, Splash? Thank you for watching this Lucky Pearls video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.